Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is Back to Basics Part 18. The newbie guide or basic guide to understanding navigation charts. So when I say navigation charts I mean things like SID charts, standard departure charts. And stars, standard arrival charts. But what I'm going to concentrate mostly on, upon in this video, are the approach charts. That's what I feel most people want to be using, or most people who are learning charts are using mainly. So the approach charts, I'm going to go through the explanation of the wording and symbology an overall meaning of the approach charts themselves, so you can gain a better understanding of them. Okay, let's not dilly-dally, let's get into this video. Okay, let's get straight into the main subjects of this video, looking at approach charts. In this case, I'm sourcing my charts from ChartFox. I did a video of this. I'll link it in the top right. Excellent free internet resource site for sourcing charts around the world. In this case, I'm looking at London Heathrow. You could type in charts. I'll show you a chart in facts of JFK later. So charts in America, in Europe. Excellent. Fully recommend it. Go and watch that video I linked just a moment ago for a more thorough explanation of ChartFox. So we're looking at this video at approach charts. This is what I feel people want to know more about. In this case, we're looking at London Heathrow, the ILS approach chart for runway 27 right. You've got different approach charts for 27 right and left. You've got ILS, lock, RNP chart here. Essentially a sort of RNAV, RNAV approach to there. But we are looking at the 27 right ILS approach chart. In Charts Fox, you can save these charts by clicking this symbol here. It will save it to a PDF file. I've done that for this chart so we can look at it in a closer view. Let's go through the top part of the chart first. Typically, always, it will tell you where it's pertaining to, in this case, London Heathrow. It will either give the full name or the ICAO code. In this case, it's giving us a full name, London Heathrow. What type of approach we're looking at, ILS approach in this case, for runway 27 right. It will give you the aircraft categories, what aircraft are able to land at this runway. So in this case, category A, B, C, and D. I'll link a Wikipedia site below that goes into a more thorough explanation of aircraft categories. I believe it's based on speed as well, but category A would be aircraft like the Cessna 172. B may be twin prop, a uh, twin engine aircraft. C may be something like the 737 A320. And D, and I believe that's a further one, E, will pertain to things like military aircraft, specialist military aircraft, and heavy military aircraft. Go and look at that site I've linked down below in the description if you want a further explan explanation of aircraft categories. Also give you the transition altitude for the UK in this case, which is 6,000 feet. It's going to be different depending where you're flying around the world and depending what aircraft you're flying. If you're flying things like the airliners, you want to dial in that transition altitude. If you're flying things like the, I don't know, King Air Cessna 172, well, the Cessna 172, 152, you don't need to worry too much about that transition altitude. You've got the various different comm frequencies for the various different control centers so things like tower radar atis information there you go atis you want to hear what the active runway is very important so you dial in the comm frequency for the atis and listen to that you want to speak to tower if you're on vatsim well maybe not because vatsim have their own frequencies so you want to you want to speak to the uh you want to listen to the ATC or tune into the ATC default ATC Heathrow Tower. That's where that's listed there. Typically, they'll be on all IC uh, all approach charts. 
What's normally typically listed as, as well is the ILS frequency somewhere at the top here. It's not here. It's actually on the pictorial, the map part of the chart. I'll come to that in just a moment. But typically, you'll have the, I, uh, the ILS frequency listed here as well. And it does, from ChartFox as well, JFK, it does actually list it at the top, which I'll show you later. Let's now move on. I'm not going to go through every single bit because each chart is different depending where you source it from. Just going through the main parts, which are pretty much on all approach charts. So the uh, control frequencies, com frequencies, what type of approach it is, transition altitude, and typically the ILS frequency if you're looking at an ILS chart and the aircraft categories, of course, which I've just gone through. Let's go to the map part of the chart the pictorial part important things to be looking at here are the bearing you want to follow for the ILS frequency or the bearing you want to lock onto in this case it's 269 a bearing of 269 to approach the ILS approach here you've got the missed bearing approach that will typically be displayed as dotted lines and a bearing next to it very typically, so if you can't land at this runway you're coming in, you miss the approach, or you simply can't land, you will follow the missed approach bearing. Typically, you would have the procedures next to it on this part of the chart. In this case, it's down below. I'll come to this part later. But typically, this part here, the missed approach procedures, will be on this part of the chart, or many charts it is anyway. In this case, it's showing us the ILS frequency here. Now, I know the frequencies for the uh, runway 27, 27 left, 27 right and left for Heathrow. So I know that's the ILS frequency. And I can prove that if we go back to chart Fox and look at 27 left. It took a while to load in there, didn't it? But it gives you a different ILS frequency, 109.50. For 27 left or 27 left. For 27 right, it's 110.30. So, in this case, if you're looking at a similar chart, look down here and you can see that's a symbology for the ILS here. That will give you the ILS frequency. Here it gives you the VOR frequency. Let me link a video in the top right about a VOR uh, video that I made. In that video, I was following sort of VORs on a map from the internet and that's a sim symbology or that's a symbol for a VOR for those who are familiar with it this will remain static re regardless of what type of chart you're looking at we're looking at the ILS chart in this case but if I look at the lock chart there that's going to remain the same because the VOR always remains the same for London and the only other thing I'll tell you about here, I don't want to go into too much detail, just the important parts of what you should be looking at in this part of the chart. So the bearing, the missed approach, and your ILS frequency, and perhaps the London VOR frequency here. Only other thing I'll mention are the different altitudes. You've got numbers here with dot next to them. That's the different altitude for the areas around the airport. So here you can see it's 614. Near Elstree here, it's 502 feet. Here, you've got different ones, 256 down here. So there you go. That's what those means here and those pertains to. There's other symbology here. I don't want to confuse the matter too much. Like I said, I've just gone from through the main parts or the main symbology that you should be looking at if you want to understand these charts a little bit better. Now let's move on to the bottom part of the chart and explain all that so now let's go through the bottom part of the chart and the symbology here probably the most important thing you should be looking at is your altitude you want to be at to intercept the glide path in this case or the ILS so that's 2,500 feet. That would be pretty much standard on all charts you would have the uh, intercepts height here so you want to be coming down and approaching the ILS at this altitude. At the top here, these are actually miles, how many miles out you are from the runway. So seven miles out, the recommended glide path profile will be 2,370 feet. 
six miles out, as you can see there, five, four, three, two, one, which would be pretty much your minimums there, just before you come into land. This part here, like I've mentioned before, this will typically, on many charts I've seen, be actually next to this dotted line, your missed approach procedures. As you can see there, climb to 3,000 feet straight ahead until passing uh, DME0, which is here over the runway, and then turn uh, turn right on to uh, 316 bearing, and then continue as directed from the ATC. Like I said, typically that would be on this part of the map, but it's here. So I just thought I'd go through that with you. You've got the o OCA and the different categories here. These are the sort of obstacle clearance heights. Don't worry too much about this over the various different categories. What else do you do? You should be able to clear obstacles. If you're going to land, especially at somewhere like London Heathrow, you'll hopefully have it clearly in your sight so you can see what not to crash into. But that's what that part would mean there. And you've got things like your rate of descent. So if you're coming in at a ground speed at 160 knots, your feet per minute should be, you should be to follow the sort of perfect glide path. Should be 850 feet per minute, coming in at 140, 740 feet per minute. Coming in at a speed of 80 knots, something like in a Cessna 172 perhaps, you'd be a bit lower than that, but your rate of descent should be 420 feet per minute. And you'll have a few more bits and pieces of writing here. It's going to be different depending on which chart you're looking at. But the main takeaway here would be the altitude you need to be at to intercept the glide path. Which is here. And the rate of descent. Do take a look at that. So set up, you know, if you're descending. Depending if you're following an autopilot uh, rate of descent, you'll probably see it if you're at that speed descending at that sort of uh, feet per minute. But it's a handy reference. If you're doing, if you're flying something like 737, A320, Concorde or whatever you're flying, and you're coming in at various different speeds, then look at this and actually... Adjust your rate of descent. Obviously, you'll have the glide path indicator, hopefully, so you'll be following that. But make sure you're following the sort of ideal uh, feet per minute rate of descent at the various different speeds you'll be doing. Okay, so that's... Now, I do apologise. I kept saying 27 right. That's the procedures for ILS 27 right. Forgive me for that. I'm always doing that. I'm trying to catch myself. So I've caught myself there. The ILS chart approach chart for runway 27 right at london heathrow let's look at a different chart so we can put what we've learnt into practice okay so let's look at a completely different chart this is a jfk international uh, as you can see there runway 31 right and again we're looking at the ils i did uh, source this from chart fox again and I've just saved it as a PDF file so can I, I can expand it to give you a clearer view. But taking what we've learned from the Heathrow uh, ILS approach there, the Heathrow ILS chart, it's got pretty similar symbology and writing on this, uh, but in slightly different places. Like I mentioned before, the ILS frequency in this case is shown at the top. So that's your ILS frequency, 111.50 for runway 31 right. It gives you the different comm frequencies here. So you've got ATIS here, Tower, all the different frequencies you can tune into. They're typically at the top. Interestingly enough, it's given the missed approach here at the top. It also gives some symbology on the map here as well, on the, on the sort of pictorial part of the chart of the mixed approach. So fly on a heading of 207 two, and turn to 027. And then follow the missed approach procedures here. Also gives you the bearing to the ILS. There's a couple of bearings here. 134 are going in the other direction, it seems. But 314 is the bearing. Obviously, to make sense of that, which one should you follow? Which runway are you heading towards? We're heading towards runway 31 right. So obviously, the bearing of 314 will be correct here. The VOR for Kennedy here. It's a bit clearer. 
cleaner, shall we say, different altitude than the London Heathrow map. But similar in many ways as well. So there you go. I've just taken what I've learned there and translating it to this map. Got the ILS frequency, got the bearing I need to follow. Bottom of the map here, the altitude to intercept the glide path. So in this case at JFK, 3000 feet. And again, if you weren't sure before, it definitely gives you the bearing you should be following there. A bearing of 314. So 3000 feet, bearing of 314. And interesting, it gives you the different categories down here in this case, category A, B, C, and D. Wouldn't worry too much about that in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're flying aircraft in there, you can pretty much land at airports like this. And this case, a slightly different profile, I believe. I have to make sense of this myself. But if you're coming in, F from FAF to map, 5.7 nautical miles. If you're coming in at this these different speeds, that's how long it should be taking you. Perhaps somebody who's more familiar with US maps can explain that part to me. I kind of got it anyway, that's how long you should be taking for that sort of range coming into land there, I believe. But maybe I'm going to leave that up to my viewers. I can look that up. I'm, well, I probably will look it up after this video. But somebody can give me a more thorough explanation of that. Quite interesting. But there you go. But generally, the takeaway from this, I'm taking away what I've learned from that Heathrow chart and bringing it over to this brand new chart here. This this brand new yeah chart from uh, ILS 31 right at uh, JFK. So there you go. And of course, taking what you've learned, you can start looking at SIDS. I'm not going to go into it in this video, because it's a slightly different uh, subject matter. It's a different subject matter altogether. But taking what you've learned now, you can then bring it over to other charts like SIDS and STARTS. But I won't get into that in this video. Well, listen, do let me know your thoughts on this video. Give it a thumbs up if it's been helpful to you and you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, many more Flight Simulator videos on their way. And I'll be seeing you soon.